What do you do as a young woman when the pressure to produce more children or to keep producing and you look for a son becomes too much and unbearable for you? I passed through that situation of one producing only two daughters and there is no son and uh, I was considered as someone who didn't produce at all, someone who who was used as someone who just came to the home to keep my body and to protect my breasts so that they do not fall. What did my husband do in this situation and how did I overcome it? How did I overcome this situation? And, and I have kept strong uh, and, and, and into a very beautiful marriage 31 years down the road. Just as we proceed, I will ask you to kindly subscribe to this video, uh, like this video and share this video with so many others and join the channel and look through and let's learn and grow together. I thank you so much. Well, as any young woman, I was so excited in getting married. I met this Mr. Wright and we dated for a short while, then we got married. And so what comes through the mind, oh, I'll have children, I'll have boys, I'll have girls, this is how I'll dress them, this is how I'll take care of them, and we'll build this home, and our children will be great, because we'll educate them, we'll do the best that these children can ever have. Well, I got my first pregnancy, uh, difficult as it was, challenging even as the delivery came because I almost lost my life. My blood clotted and my body froze and for four days uh, people, my mother thought uh, she was losing me uh, through that first pregnancy. And finally I delivered, uh, came out of the coma and, and, and I survived. And now Gentlemen, please always honor your wife when she goes to the hospital, however simple it looks. There is this very thin line between giving birth and death. Giving birth and death, there is a very thin line. So when your wife comes out of the hospital, please cherish her, love her, protect her so that she does not sink into postnatal depression. Cover her up so that every word that is spoken against her does not hit her heart, does not tear her apart, does not uh, kill the spirit of this your lady. Sometimes you'll go there expecting a boy and you get a girl. Sometimes you'll go expecting a girl and you get a boy. And the pressure that comes from the society can be too much. And at the end of the day, you'll find yourself looking around uh, to marry the next uh, lady, uh, to give you the next six of the children that you want. Or maybe you don't even have children yet. Or maybe God will give them to you at a later stage. And so you hurry to jump out of the marriage to go and look for the children. Well, after my first child, uh, I think the doctor was so worried. He told me, you can even stop there. Or if you're going to give birth again, make sure it is you know, well spaced. And so after five years, I tried again. We tried again with my husband. Uh, of course, they had called me uh, all sorts of names for having one child at that moment. Nobody cared what happened to me. And so they wanted the next child, the next child, and the next child. And so after five years, we had our second child. And you know, that pregnancy was so different. It was so uh, peaceful. I walked through. I didn't even vomit. I didn't even know that I was pregnant at first. And so it, I really thought that uh, the sex was different, that I was going to have a son this time. And so the child comes out and it is a girl. And we are so grateful uh, to God with my husband. But the delivery was worse than the first. The blood clotting, my body freezing, my heart stopping, and so many things happening. And actually, the second child, I was even in London. I had joined my husband. I had visited my husband, who was on a course. And uh, when, when I went to the doctors, they said, we are sorry, you may not deliver this child. There are so high chances that you may not uh, make it after delivery. So we want you to know that even as we 
take you through this, you may die. And when that situation arose, I told them I need to go back home. Uh, in Uganda, I will meet uh, some old lady who helped me deliver the first child, and I will deliver this child safely. And I know I came through into the airport. Uh, many people rushed to London to deliver, but for me, I rushed back to Uganda to deliver my baby. And so I rushed through into the airport, went straight to um, Bara Hospital. Of course, the lady who had delivered me, that she was an old lady and she had retired, but I really begged the hospital to find her so that she was a nurse, so that she can deliver me. And when they found her, she looked at me, she said, young lady, do you want to die? We told you not to be pregnant again. I said, well, it has happened, now you've got to help me. And she did. She did. She helped me. I delivered. I went into the coma. She did everything possible that she could do. I recovered by the grace of God. And then my pain, my challenges, my troubles start. Two years after the delivery of my second child, as I was trusting God for another pregnancy, in spite of the health challenges I, I, I had when I was delivering these children, um, I, the pressure was too much. I, I decided, we decided with my husband that we can have uh, other children. Of course, we tried and tried and tried. I think this time God knew if I had another child, maybe I, I would die. And so the child didn't come. I remember we went to uh, one of the medical personnel and they prescribed some fertility tablets. We took them and I went into menstruation for I think it was about 18 months, you know, bleeding daily, bleeding daily. I thank God for my husband because even through those situations, uh, he never he never went out to look for other children. Uh, when the pressure had become too much from the parents, I, I remember I pushed him so hard. I really wanted him to go out there, look for money-minded girls, impregnate them, and bring for me the children to take care of. But he didn't. And so as I ran through the period for the 18 months that I suffered, I bled, I became so thin, I became so worn out, everything bad happened to me. In spite of the challenges that I was passing through, society did not give me a break. The words were too many. I remember one time my husband sat one of the relatives and said, I wish you knew what this woman was, uh, was how and what she was standing against the pressures that she's experiencing, the support that she has given me, the challenges she's uh, standing uh, against, and then you give her a break. Now, remember, he's the first son. You know, we are doing everything for everyone, but nobody wants to know. Hmm? And so when uh, the pressure became too much, he just told me, just be strong. And I opted to close my ears to blind my eyes and to block my heart to anything that was negative. I remember one time uh, I, I wanted to host uh, children, it was a Christmas, and I innocently wanted some uh, family children to come and join my children for a Christmas party. And one of the relatives said, mm -mm, do you think you're just, she's just being kind? She's just collecting children so that she can kill our sons, so that she can be uh, you know, we can all be like like her who doesn't have a son. And, you know, it hurt badly. In fact, none of the relatives who had a son allowed uh, their children to come and visit me, except one who allowed me to be a good mother to, to the children. And uh, But by that time, my heart was already given up. I didn't want uh, people's sons to come to my house if anything happened to them, then it would be so bad. You know, when the kindness, trying to find fulfillment in, in, in other people's children, in other people's sons, you want to own them, but at the end of the day, your kindness is looked at as a, a motive to harm other people's sons. It wasn't easy. It was so difficult. 
When a woman gets to that point and she wants to tell her husband to go and marry another wife to give her sons and maybe more children, that is a point of crushing. Did I allow myself to crush? I didn't. I didn't allow myself to crush. I decided that I'm going to appreciate God for the two daughters that I have. I'm not going to explain to anyone because I owe no one I owe no one any explanation because it is God who gives children and it is God who determines who um, the children that you bear, whether they are boys or whether they are girls. After all, children are a gift from God. And uh, did I create bitterness in my heart? Yes, at some point I was bitter. I was angry. I was so uh, you know, irritated. But at the end of the day, I asked myself, when I am angry, who is hurt? It is me that will continue to be hurt. And in fact, if I continue to be angry the way that I am, I was about to push my husband out of the home. And so I calmed down. I trusted God. It's been 31 years in marriage. The girls have grown one of them is married. I have a wonderful son in law who I, I love so much and I am so proud of, of him. I am so thankful to God for him. He's a wonderful husband to my daughter and he's my son. The second one, I'm looking forward to the second son. Then I can uh, confidently say, God has blessed me with sons in my old age. I want to encourage you out there. If you do not have children as yet, continue looking up to God. He's the one who gives children. And if you have only girls like me and the pressure of getting a son is too much and you're not considered, you're not even respected in the community uh, of your husband, it's okay. Just relax and look up to God and thank God for the girls. And if you're there, you haven't had children as yet, my heart is with you. Continue looking up to God. He is the giver of all gifts. If he doesn't give you biological children, he will give you even spiritual children. As I speak right now, I don't only a boast of my son-in-law. I have adopted all so many other young men who call me mother, who treat me like their mother, who know me. As, some of them know me as their only mother because they are orphans. And I am grateful to God that I've had the opportunity of raising so many sons, and my quiver is full of those so many sons. Never be discouraged. Life gives lemons. But if you trust God, God will turn those lemons into lemonade. God bless you so much. Kindly remember to subscribe and to like and to share this video. And let us grow together. God bless you.